What's good, y'all? Welcome to my review for this week's episode of Attack on Titan, y'all. This episode was episode 5, man. Like, now we're near as strong as last week's episode, which y'all know that episode was an absolute fucking masterpiece. But this episode was awesome, man. Um, and yo, the ending was crazy, but yo. Alright, guys, but before we jump right into the actual episode itself, I've got to talk about the dub, because this, as you guys know, this week was the week where. Um, to not where um, Toonami aired Sasha's death. It was that episode. I was tweeting all day. I was tweeting all night while the episode was airing a little before it started on Toonami. That I was not looking forward to rewatching this episode, and and I was right. Um, this was of course a very painful episode to rewatch Sasha's death. And all y'all saw my tweets. If you guys follow me on Twitter, which you totally should at Gift Monster. Anyway, <laughs> so. So first off, I got first off the voice acting once again was great. Yo, um, Lindsay, um, what the hell was her name? Uh, the chick that voices, um, um, what was her name? Yeah, Lindsay Sadel, Sadel. I keep forgetting her name. Lindsay Sadel that plays Gabby. Yo, she's been fucking killing in this episode. Like, I was gonna, first I was kind of surprised by you know when she, we got to the scene where she's like shouting out the window with Falco about like, trying to get Reiner out, uh, trying to get Reiner to wake up and fight Aaron. That wasn't pretty, but yo, when she actually starts, just starts ranting and raving that we good Eldians, we true Eldians, yada yada yada, and she's like screaming into the face, into in Jean's and John's face, man, great shit there. She was absolutely fucking killing it there. And then of course Funimation, yo, Funimation legit made Sasha's death hit, hit harder than it did the sub. Now, ninety percent certain that when I reviewed the episode when I first watched it sub, that it wasn't the official Crunchyroll subs. So this might have been so it might have been slightly different on there compared to the subs I was reading, but whatever. But I love what they did here. So in the original Japanese, if my if my memory serves me correct, I might be misremembering some third. I might be uh, mismer, mismer, misremembering this. But um, I believe in the original sub, she said um, uh, Connie said that her death, uh, that her last words were meat. That she just said meat. Well, in the Funimate, well in the dub, Funimation actually had it where she says she asked for some meat. Which yo, that just mm, that be hidden that be hidden even harder than before, man. If that was, if that's what the original sub said, but yo, Funimation they actually killed it without. And then of course also Food Wars season three debuted. We got wrong. We have we finally saw Best Girl. She made her try. We saw Rindo. She made her her entrance into uh, Food Wars. And yo, I love her dub voice. Um, she's actually voiced by. Um, that was her name, uh, Morgan Barry, who's a chick I never heard of, and uh, so that so and so this is my first time here, at least from what I can remember. Um, but she was great from the little snippet I got. I can tell that she's perfect for Rindo. I actually tagged her in the tweet right below and giving her a shout out, saying, "Look, I know you're perfect for Rindo, and look forward to hearing your performance for the rest of it." She actually liked both posts, so <laughs> so you know that was cool. But the most surprising thing is, and this is the last thing I want to talk about uh, before we jump right into the actual episode, is actually from this cl cl um, tweet, Clifford Champ. Been, uh, tweeted out. I think this might have been while the episode was airing or not, but I was tweeting, just going through my feed. I think my probably one during the little commercial breaks. This was after the episode had aired, and he tweeted out this. This actually found kind of surprising. Um, he said, This last scene was really heavy to record. I channeled a lot of my feelings from, from uh, Brad v Venable, which I guess is some VA. I've never heard of this dude. Uh, passing last month into it, I just hope it, uh, it would have done him proud. Thank you for watching Attack on Titan Final Season on Toonami, everyone. Have a good night. And so, I didn't know, at first when I saw a comic scene, I thought it was great, but yo, actually hearing the backstory around that, I'm like, yo, yo, that, that yeah, damn it, it kind of adds a little bit more to his performance right there, so. Great shift from, Cl from Clifford from uh, that scene, but that was just kind of surprising to see when I saw that on my feed, that he actually, like, he put a lot of his person up to, I guess, some VA that passed. I've never even heard of this dude. But, um, yeah, man, so, that was quite interesting to see. Um, yeah, so, anyway, Fire, Fire Force this week was also really good, like, yo, the Reaper? Badass. But anyway, I've gone on long enough about Fire Force, Tsunami, and Attack on Titan, all that shit. Let's just jump right into the actual episode. So we start this episode off. We got we got Armin. He's chilling like this, the underground era, wherever they keep um, uh, uh, um, Annie at. I was slipping on her name for something. Which, this is the second time we've seen Annie in Season 4, which is more than we've pretty much seen her throughout all of Season 2 and all of Season 3, mostly. We see her more times in this one season than we have in both those seasons of mine, which, like I said before, I've always kind of expected this ever since we saw that Annie was locked herself in that crystal, that she was probably going to come back eventually. And knowing that this is now the second time we've seen her, 
in season four. I suspect we're gonna see her somewhere, whether she ends up, whether they just end up just feeding her Titan to someone else, or they give it, or you know, she just ends up betraying Marlia and goes with the Eldians, teams up with Aaron. Whatever the case may be, I think we're gonna see Annie and the female Titan in some sort of, sh in some shape or form, events, and we're gonna see them return. Anyway, so my man is just chilling. He's kind of like talking to Annie, and then he kind of like goes to like tries to like stretch his hand about to touch the crystal. And so Hitch, who I believe was actually the chick that was with Annie, that was in Annie's group back in season one when she joined the military police, I believe that was the same girl that also you know betrayed that they end up going with the survey corporal number one, one dude that went on that went on to the battlefield and then ended up getting like hit with um uh, zeke's rocks when erwin gave his ex sv and they just like cut to her waiting up for bed after he died i think it's the same chick it might be another girl correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but anyway she's like no touch um star dear customer you can don't there is no touching around here and of course my man armin is freaking out of what she's insinuating i'm like goddamn my boy armin is one of the most some innocent motherfuckers out there. Not a single lewd thought passes through this man's mind. And you're gonna do my boy dirty like that? Damn, man. That's fucked up. <laughs> so, she kind of like is up teasing about like, uh, and then Armin's desperately trying to explain, no, Titan's information, no, Titan's memories can trigger me at all. So, to see if I can get any information. She's like, oh, I can see why you would want Annie's precious information. <laughs> Armin is just like, oh, please just don't ban me. <laughs> It was kind of cute, but I'm like, come on, why you gotta do my boy like that? <laughs> why you gotta do my boy Armin like that? So anyway, after that, we cut over to Armin and um, and Hitch. They're both kind of just walking down this walking, and she asks him if she knows if he's known what's happening. And he says yes. So then she hands him this, I guess, the latest newspaper and tells him to read it. We find out that, you know, that the, I think the headline said something along the lines of like, the military is still like keeping information from us, and that. Um, that concern around the military was at a boiling point. Which, I wonder if Hanji is like kind of, which, this kind of made me wonder while I was watching the episode. This also kind of goes back to what we saw last episode, or my, no, 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 the episode before that. Um, because you guys might remember Hanji, um, when Hanji was like all those reporters that were circling around the door and they were asking what's going on. Because afterwards, we, once later on the episode, once they kind of like leave that little hallway over there, we see that there's a bunch of people protesting in front of the military base. And they apparently they're doing this at all the other military bases. I wonder if, this guy makes me wonder if Hanji is kind of realizing why they, why the, why, why the royalty and the previous rulers of Eldia, or um, uh, of Parody, excuse me, um, uh, decided to hide information from the public because of this. I wonder if Hanji's still starting to realize that maybe it wasn't a good idea to just leak out all, to like, just like open the floodgates and let them see everything what has, because look what's happening now. Everyone is, like, they're, they're basically a deified Aaron in a way, where they're all like, Aaron is our only true savior, that he's basically Jesus to these which is honestly kind of interesting that the monk went this route because you can obviously see the the correlations to that with Aaron kind of being a deity to these people, uh, a messiah, if you will. No, no, not the Monday Night Messiah, Seth Rollins, but you guys get my point. So I don't know. I thought that was like a really interesting thing that they've done with Aaron and in these last couple of episodes, and I'm curious if that if Hanji and kind of think if Hanji started to regret you know letting up all the information considering what's happening currently right now in season four, how she is also hiding information from the public because of she doesn't because because of what's going on there, they don't know what's going on. All this it makes me kind of wonder, and it, I also found it interesting how they've been kind of like Aaron has almost been like deified. Uh, in recent episodes, like he is the only true savior of Eldia, of, of the Eldian, the new Eldian Empire. He is our only ruler, yada 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 yada, is what they're saying while they're protesting. So then Hitch, kind of like some of the other guys tell him, like, hey, we need some help, Hitch, help. And she's like, oh, more work. And she runs off. Mika, then we get to Mikasa. She ends up coming here, like, okay, while well, we're doing this, this is our chance, let's go. So the end, so they walk, so they kind of go back to where uh, Armin originally was before they've been to, like, they get to the open area. And they notice while they're climbing the stairs that there's these new members of the survey corps just kind of chilling around. And she's like, huh, what are they doing? And Mikasa asks, like, what are they doing in HQ? Keep it, keep that in the back of your mind, because these guys, because these are going to come back up later in the episode, which that was pretty shocking. Uh, so then we're actually back with Pixis and uh, and uh, Yela. We kind of figure out what's been going on between Yela and Aaron, what happened, and we do find that indeed she was actually the one that did um, 
that did talk to Aaron in, pri in secret. And it wasn't really any, and Pix is meant to like, oh, so you called him to like try and convince him to go over to Marley to make the military take action, you know, start the, and start, and start, and start this whole thing, get the ball rolling. And she says that none of it was the case. She basically did it out of curiosity. She wanted Aaron to like notice him or, whatever, or know her. And she and and I think uh, and to, to just know her and she was not surprised by what happened with Aaron how he like and she mentioned like something like that he delivered divine justice um, to Marley and you know like I said before it's really interesting how Aaron's kind of been deified almost because then we see later on the episode when we get to like with Aaron once we get there but we'll get we'll talk more about that once we get to that part of the episode where we finally get that trailer shot that was the first trailer uh, I'm pretty sure they used different angles for this episode but it still was a pretty badass shot not gonna lie but we'll talk more about that about there but basically we find out that actually Yela basically talked to Aaron and simply just for out of curiosity just so she would I guess so he would notice her or get to know, or know about her so that was kind of interesting, and then Pixis actually ends it off with saying Yuan, where um, while they're, we're right before we cut over to Onyakupo with Hanji, which was let's see Onyakupo. You haven't seen him in a few episodes, and he's cool. <laughs> um, now this chick, one of the other members of the of the of whatever this group is, I keep forgetting what this group's called, um, puts down a book and like starts and gets like a pen out, and she says that she wants to and he wants um, to write down everything that she said to Aaron, and Pixis then says, you know what's a good way to lie? By mixing in bits of truth in it. So then we get over to like we see this more scene scenic shot. We got these trees and this forest, and we get to see a squirrel kind of mind its own business. Then we got one of the other guys just chill. I think it was a survey court dude, just like you know, rubbing up against his jacket before eating it, just admiring the lush environments around before we're then back with the Yakapone shuffling cards. So as he in Yakapone is like shuffling these cards with Hanji, he's like, man. <sighs> I swear, I'm so disappointed you guys still doubt us. I don't say, I mean, come on, we sweated together out there building the railroad and train and all that stuff. And so as it's going on, we actually see Hanji, she like gets up on the table and is like staring at him with like this weird expression on her face. And and then Hanji asks ask him, uh, like, you know, uh, about Yela and if he knew anything about it because of him going, uh, of her meeting with Aaron soon. And Yael Capone claims that he does not know any any about that, which makes sense, which definitely goes with Yela said earlier on the episode because she said that she worked on, she worked alone with all this stuff. She didn't bring anyone else involved. And so, as, so then they're kind of like just thinking about what's going on. Uh, ha, uh, Hanji mentioned something about like uh, I think I think in Yakupo said Yela, and I think Hanji says what you know uh, that Yela will never do anything like that's what most people say in situations. She asked him if, if Yela would do anything like that, and so eventually she just asked him to tell her everything she knows about Yela, and we find out a little bit more about her where where whenever there was anyone doubting them on uh, or there was she would like kill them and, and but make it look like an accident. We actually see some screen some like three flashes of what that looked like and it looked it was actually quite as damning. Yale is definitely not, definitely the chick you do not want to fuck with, ladies and gentlemen. She like I said like I think pretty sure I said this in the one of the earlier episodes when she got introduced and we really got to know her. Um she is low key the new Annie of the series, low key until Annie maybe comes back or whatever. But anyway, after that, we then head over back with um, Sasha. With um, Sasha, <laughs> she's dead. Uh, we head over back with Mikasa and Armin. They're kind of they're talking with the Supreme Commander. The dude we got him. You know, he's looking outside his window, we just seeing like you know the protests that's going on uh, back there. And we find and they're and obviously Ar um, Armin and Mikasa are trying to get to meet with Aaron, and the dude doesn't let. Them. We find out that's because of what because of what because they suspect that Aaron has made contact with the volunteers. This is a very sensitive issue and all that, so they can't you know make it make um, can't have them have them meet him. And so Armin, of course, pleads and like, oh, we know him. If anyone's gonna get him to talk, it's us. We can probably get something out of him, you know. And then he says that they've been you know nothing but silent. That he's been silent since he's you know, been captured and whatever. And so then Armin notices this chair. Now this chair, at first I honestly thought it was some makeshift electric chair because there was like these metal parts around like on the ends of it. I thought this was some like fucking makeshift World One, World War One era version of the electric chair because it kind of looked like it. But and he's, and uh, Aramin obviously asks him, "What's about this? What's up with this chair?" And the dude, the commander says, oh, no, it's nothing. I had nowhere else to put it. So I just had a bunch of recruits come in there and you put it in here. 
And so they even so, uh, and so I'm like, yeah, fam, sure. That don't look like any regular chair. But anyway, um, um, Mikasa and, and Armin, they both take their leave and they, you know, go outside. So they're kind of just because, and they're both shocked that they did not let, they didn't let him uh, go with Aaron, that they didn't let Mia, which we also, one oh, thing I forgot to mention, um, we find out also as well that they believe because of, you know, what's been going on with Aaron recently, that he might be being controlled by Zeke. And of course, Mikasa and Armin are shocked to hear that. Uh, which honestly, with how different Aaron has been since season three from like the, um, from the uh, the flashbacks we've seen from season four of what Aaron was right a little bit before he went and joined up uh, and went to Marley and you know all the stuff from the early part of season four happened. Aaron seemed like about where he was back at the end of season three, and the dude has changed so much that I honestly like, wouldn't be surprised if maybe Zeke has been messing with him or maybe controlling him or manipulating him in some ways. You never know, so there could be some truth to that actually. But anyway. We then, but anyway, so as they're there, so they're, so we see these, like, so as Mika said, Armin are walking out the room, we see these two members of the survey, we see these two members, or three rather, three members of the military police walking toward the Supreme Commander's room. They walk inside. Because said Armin, they're talking about what they think happened. Uh, Air, um, Armin thinks that maybe if he had to come up with an idea that maybe the military police has already given up on Air and they're looking for the next heir for the founders. So then we see, so then we see a quick shot of like the military police guys are talking with the supreme commanders. They've like handed them some paperwork or something. But then Mikasa decides she's gonna ears ears drop on them to figure out what's going on to see what. And, she, and Armin is obviously like, no, don't do it. And she's like, don't worry, I won't. She's like, got caught, but we can't violate the rules. And she's like, we need to know what the military is, what the next, military's next plan is as soon as possible. So as she's going on about this. So as she goes on about this, the fuck the the Supreme Commander's room fucking explodes. It like blows up. There's a huge explosion. We see his torso, the, the Supreme Commander's torso, just fly out from the explosion, just land splat right in the middle of the open area, right in front of the crowd of the protesters. And so like, and it's only his torso because we can and you can clearly see because we saw him, like him flying outside smoke. It was only his torso that survived, and as he splats, we get a quick shot of him. Nothing too, nothing too. We don't see the whole body, but we basically see the man's face. Of course, people are shocked. They're trying to get the red fire. People are screaming that they're seeing a the dead body. They obviously go to cover him up once Mikasa and Armin get back downstairs. And once they do, we find. And then once they do, they cover him up. And then the protester says, "Like yes, our rage has finally reached them, Shingo Sasayo!" And they all just start screaming, "Shingo Sasayo!" Then again, your heart. <coughs> Which I'm, you just know that uh, that Erwin is is look is looking down upon them from up above with a smile on his face that they are that they are all screaming his trade one of his trademark cat phrases because I'm sure we all remember whenever he would charge about he would say shingles is high Erwin Erwin was such a badass man but anyway. Afterwards, we're now in this room. You got Han Jean, a couple others, along with Aaron, with Armin and and uh, Mikasa. We're trying to figure out what happened. So the commander ended up dying along with, the, along with four other recruits, which, I, which I'm assuming was the three we saw from the military base. So four in total, rather. So they're all kind of discussing. Hanji mentioned that he was with with him the whole time, and I'm assuming she's referring to Inyakapon, who was with there as well. And then Armin brings up the chair and that he had it brought in by recruits. And so and so one of the and like I guess like the leader of the military police says by which recruits. She didn't say he just said recruits. And that they mentioned they saw some member, some members, and they believe the chair was the one that had that there was a, a bomb placed that was in place into the into the chair, because which probably was given the explosion all that shit. But anyway, that the three recruits they did see walking out the HQ as they were walking in was from the serving, and once they hear this, ever for some reason everyone in the entire military just has like this. I don't know what the what to describe this face as shock. Horror, a mixture of both, but they're just like, Nani? First off, the leader of the military was like, like Nani? And then you got the other, and then you got the everyone else just be like, Oh my god, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I took a time with their facial expression, man. It's like, <laughs> There's something else, man. But anyway, after that, so after we get those great, great A's facial expressions, they mentioned that, you know, speak of the survey corps. 
that a handful of their members have been, you know, imprisoned for for leaking information about Aaron. And he says, could it be before then someone barges in through the door and says, Commander, Aaron has left, Aaron has escaped from his cell. And of course everyone's like, you know, mobilize the troops, all go and look for him. And so as they're walking out, we see Aaron. My man is shirtless. First of all, Aaron is ripped as hell. Like, yo, I don't know what my man has been doing between the three year Tuscan, but I don't remember my boy being this fucking ripped. But anyway, and so Aaron is walking up this mountain, which looks like to be like a mountain or like a hill or something. And yo, can we talk about, now, I know a lot of people have brought up the backgrounds of Attack on Titan recently in these last couple of episodes, and how great they are, which they are. I haven't really mentioned them myself in my reviews discussed, but yo, can we all take a moment to appreciate like the sunset that was behind Aaron as he was climbing up, as he was walking up like that hill or whatever? Looked fucking beautiful, man. But anyway, Mikasa is of course shocked. She's just like, Hey, Admin, just what is happening? And so you know, she's shot, and again, so like they're now there's Carnage, and, and, and you know, Arm is trying to like re reassure her that don't worry, else it's gonna be okay. Aaron will understand once we talk. About. So then we Aaron gets on top, and then there's Float and the rest of his cronies. He's that, and he's holding out, and he's like has like this folded like basically a check in his hand, and he and Float tells him, "You are the only one that can lead, that can lead, that can save the Eldian Empire, Erin Yeager." And so Aaron grabs it and it just. Pfft, Puts it on like an absolute badass, man. Like we finally get that trailer shot. I'm 90% certain that when they actually aired when this episode act, uh, com that they used different angles here compared to what was actually used in the trailer. It might have been the same shot. I'm not sure, but I swear it looked a little bit different. But either way, still looked fucking backwards. They used that same shot in the post credits. Um, not post credits. The mid, the uh, like, you know, where they like basically where they have like the the, the, the still that gives them more information on basically when the commercial break happens. They put it. They had the shot there too, which was pretty cool. And so as I was saying earlier on in the episode, um, my early review rather, it like legit with like especially right here, it, it really comes off like Aaron has almost been has been has become like this mythical creature. Since the start of the since the start of the season, with you know Flo's viewing him as like like a, like a, like almost as like a deity or something, with like they say like you are only hard like he is their savior. You know? It's quite interesting stuff, and I'm sure you could probably tie the, you could probably compare this to other world leaders how they rose to power throughout the history as well, and you could probably find some similarities between uh, Aaron and, the, and them. But I just found that really interesting how Aaron has almost been like, you know, how he is, how everyone just kind of like looks at him like a god almost. As like, you are our lord and savior. You know? It's really interesting stuff. That's kind of one of the main things a little about Titan Titan because there's so much, there's so much to this series. Anyway, on to the rest of the episode. So, we get back, we're back with Hanji and everyone else are now in this other room and that they need to find a name for you know, these new soldiers. Cause they, and they also mentioned that Flower and all the others have also been missing from the cells so they think that they left with Aaron. So they think of so they're trying to think of a name for them. They find out what they're gonna call them. They're gonna call them the Jaegers. Not bad name. Not bad name. Not bad. And so, so then they're kind of discussing on like what their first plan of attack is, and which Hanji thinks is going to be controlling, which which is what Aaron said. The first thing after he put on the fucking jacket was say, "Okay, let's go find, let's locate Zeke." <laughs> so I'm like, man, that shot was so badass. I'm so looking at the thumbnail. But anyway, so. Uh, Hanji, so, so Hanji knows that they're most likely going to go for Eren first, and then after that they're going to go for Queen Astoria. And she suspected the last straw was when they were going to uh, transfer the phone time without informing the survey corps. And the military police guy says, we already know what would have happened if we had told you. And so they're kind of figuring out what to do next. They're also, of course, they're giving Hanji shit because you're the leader of the survey corps and most of the guys that have fled or that have, you know, that have defected have been from the survey course. So what are you gonna do now? She said she's gonna take responsibility. But if I was to like, you know, relieve my, if I was supposed to like relieve my position now, it would be extremely responsible, and we have bigger fish to fry. And so then they started to like, kind of like, how do we know? But then how? And then one of the other guys mentioned like, how will we know that you are not also Jaegerist yourself? You're members of the survey corps. You've been sworn now, and we wouldn't be any the wiser. How can you prove it? And she's like, don't be ridiculous. How? You're members of the survey corps. You can what? I, how am I supposed to know? How can you prove it? So then they're going back and forth. This is It's like I'm watching the fucking John Carpenter's The Thing right now. Then Pixis comes in there. It's like, all right, all right. Then the bickering. 
We got bigger things to do right now instead of bigger. So then she, so, so Pixis, even though my man ain't even the command of this yet, which <laughs> Armin points us out later on, the F a little bit later on, my man Pixis is going right, in, right into action. So he's saying, he asks Hanji how many people know about Levi, where Zeke is, and she says, well, 30, Levi, 30 people, uh, three others for like supplies and herself. So then he tells her to get the three. And so then he asked military police guy to, um, you know, about uh, Historia. They say that, you know, only a handful of people know, but he'll go check. So they, every, so they, so they get, in, so they, so they're going into their positions doing the thing. And then Harmon actually comes in there and say like, you know, with the Supreme Commander dead, you're the only person that should, you know, take over as leader. <laughs> Which I thought was kind of, I don't know if Ar I don't know if that, no, I don't know if that was already stated maybe back in season three that he would be the next one if he was to die. Or Armin saw how good he handled this situation and says, you're our next leader. I don't know what happened, but, er but Armin did, but Armin was right in making picks that picks that should be the next one leader. Anyway. So then Armin asks him, "What? Is, okay, so what is our plan?" And he says, "I ain't got shit. So let's surrender." <laughs> um, so, <laughs> which Loki is kind of basically said, but realistically, they're gonna what they're gonna say because a couple of, like there was this one fat chance be like, "Are we really going to surrender to the people that killed Commander Vex, the kill com the Supreme Commander?" You know, and he said, and actually, Pixis said that uh, I, I, I know him, I know him for a lot of time, so I'm sure he would be satisfied living and dying by a rev by a revolution. But what he's really planning on doing is not straight just like submitting to them, like bending the knee, like you, Aaron, are overlord. Please take our military and remake it in your image with you at the top. No, what they're gonna try and do is negotiate with um with Ar with arm with Aaron and try to and use in Zeke's location as their chip as their I guess you could say their ace in the hole as their leverage to see what they can get out of them so and then of course they tell um, the uh, uh, he's he's the uh, the chick I, the the Asian chick we saw about his best I'm slipping on her name but they tell her to like stay by the port area because it's not safe so just stay there until we get the excuse me until we get the situation under under control and so, she, so she, so so, you know, they do. So they say their goodbye, but then she asked uh, for Mikasa, which when she called Mikasa, she called her Mikasa Sama. So you know, so, you know, go and full out, go and all in with that. And basically, she just starts begging Mikasa to join with them, to like, if you are in danger, please come with us. Yada yada yada. Your last hope. Yada yada yada. And Mikasa's like, even with. Out the resources. So at this point, she Mika says it's like dumb play game. She knows that she ain't even it, that she don't give two flying fucks about her or who even runs the country. She even says like, I, you don't care who runs the country or not. All you care about is the underground resources. And she's just, and her face is just like, just screams, shit, my cover is blown. And so she says, yes, they, if they, if the rumbling isn't as it was, it's meant to be. He's under would surely or. Uh, uh, um, yeah, Hizoru would surely cut their ties with us. So Mikasa ends up saying, you know, and Mikasa also tells her that she's an Eldian and she wants to overwatch, uh, watch over the place where she grew up in. So they, so, that, so then after that, we then cut over to Mikasa and everyone. They're outside. Connie is trying to is like, so we were supposed to work with Aaron with the rumbling and all that. And she and like Connie is like inter starts to interrogate Mikasa like, whose side are you on? And she's like, I am on your side. Didn't you hear me say Armin and I were caught up in the explosion? Ain't that enough evidence for you? Hanji eventually comes step in, tells them to stop and find that only can lead to their downfall, and that. So then they keep going and they end up deciding that their next plan of attack is to kind of like look over some of the air to try and get what else that what other leads they can get on about Zeke and all that shit. And they end up looking at the Marley and POWs um, where they're held at and that's that they look kind of suspicious. More specifically, the restaurant, which is as we saw later at the end part of the episode, that's where Gabby and Falco is at. So... So obviously this is already starting to get a little bit more suspenseful as you see in the music, by the way, in this section right here in the episode, there's like this last like minute or so it was fantastic, great music right there from whoever does the OST. So then, so that's there, so you see this, so you see Gabby and Falco in the background uh, behind everyone else in the door and you know, they actually look pretty good. But then we get over back to Hanji and everything, and they're just charging over to the restaurant. You got this amazing music blaring in the background. And then we slowly zoom in on this woman in the background, like chilling by like this, I don't know what it was, some cylinder looking thing, and reading a newspaper, and we find out it's Peak. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Peak has now is now in parody. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where they cut the episode off. They just leave you on that cliffhanger. And, yo, the next episode preview, judging from what we saw of it, the next episode is going to be fucking fire, man. So, I am excited for next week. You got Peak. You know, you got Peak now in Marla and Eldia. Or, that's not Eldia. You got her in Parody. You got you to have Jean and the rest of the Survey Corps in the same room as, as Gabby and Falco. Next week's going to be fucking lit, man. So... Yeah, overall, guys, this issue, this episode was amazing. I absolutely loved it. Nice little bits of that as lore we got. Um, it was the, well, not really lore, but just like more like just more information we saw. We found out with uh, fucking Yela, and of course, we just got and of course that badass shot of Aaron putting on the jacket. I mean, come on now, that that, that that's just amazing. That's just excellent. Man. But um, yeah, man, this episode was awesome. So we got much more to save it, so that's where I'm gonna end it off here, guys. So overall, I give this episode of Attack on Titan a nine out of ten, guys. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you feel like it. Links down in the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.